Welcome back to Square Off. Last year, Arizona voters approved Prop 208, the Invest in Ed initiative that created a new revenue stream for K-12 schools. The source was an income tax surcharge on high wage earners. During the past legislative session, Republican Governor Doug Ducey and GOP lawmakers who opposed Prop 208 did everything they could to neuter it. Now the law is hanging by a thread after an Arizona Supreme Court ruling that Prop 208 is likely unconstitutional. So what did the Supreme Court decide and what happens to that new revenue stream for schools? Joining us is Ben Giles, a longtime Capitol reporter, now with KJZZ Radio. Welcome back to Square Off, Ben. Thanks, Bram. So help us understand what the Supreme Court decided. Why did the justices say Prop 208 is likely unconstitutional? I think a good place to start is to explain that there is an aggregate cap on education spending in Arizona. That's something that voters approved on the ballot all the way back in 1980. It's been there ever since. And so Prop 208 was actually designed to get around that cap. They wanted to raise a tremendous amount of revenue for K-12 public schools. They estimated on the high end $940 million annually. And to do that, they needed to find a way to make sure that raising all that revenue didn't exceed the cap. So they designed Prop 208 to work like grants. They said, this isn't going to be just like a, a direct revenue stream for schools. This is going to be grant money for schools. And that is what the Supreme Court said is wrong. They said, no, you can't do that. We don't think these are grants. We don't think this gets around this big cap on K-12 through spending. The education expenditure limit, and this may be the first time many viewers have heard of it, that it exists. And as you say, it's, it's 40 years old. Is, yeah. it that out, is it outdated? Well, it is tied to budgets from 1979. The, the lawmakers back then went to the people and said, we think that there's a chance that local school districts are going to tax the heck out of you. We don't want that to happen. We don't want spending on education to get out of hand. So let's take budgets from 1979. You know, the, the cap gets adjusted every year, but it's it has in recent years come up as a little bit of a thorn in the side of public school advocates who who want to spend more money. And in recent years, a debate at the Capitol has been, well, if we spend more money, we're going to hit that cap. So how did that come into play as the court in the court's decision that Prop 208 was likely unconstitutional? Well, as I mentioned, the, the crux of the argument seemed to hinge on what is a grant and what is not a grant. Prop 208 advocates argued that in, in the law, in the law that voters approved, voters approved this money to be dispersed as grants. Karen Fan, the Senate president, the Republican leader of the Senate in Arizona, and other lawmakers and some business groups argued, this is not what a grant is. This is money that should go towards the cap. And the Supreme Court agreed. Now, the problem there is, if it goes towards the cap, is it going to help exceed the cap? Or are the $940 million in annual revenue going to exceed that threshold? And what the Supreme Court did is they kicked this back to the trial court to, to take a look at the evidence and decide, will this exceed the cap? Is it projected to exceed the cap? And their instructions to the trial court were, if it's going to exceed this constitutional spending limit on education, the whole proposition, the whole ballot measure needs to be tossed. It's invalid. And the numbers I saw are that there's just about $144 million dollars right now between spending and the cap we've been coming up right up to that cap in a lot in recent years and and that has been a debate about whether or not to exceed it republicans have typically been uh, reticent to to vote to exceed that spending cap they say hey it, it might be 1980 but it was the will of the voters this is in the arizona constitution this is what voters wanted to do they wanted to set a spending limit on education. So yes, it seems very likely that Prop 208 revenues are going to exceed the cap. All the projections that have been done so far say, yes, it will. And let's just go back to the fact that even the drafters of the initiative, they knew they were running up against the cap. That's why they designed the initiative to use grants to get around it. So it, this really is a, a 
bad, bad turn for uh, yet another effort at the ballot to boost funding for K through 12 schools. The second, the second effort by Invest in Ed, and it appears the second time the Arizona Supreme Court is going to throw it out. Was this just a, a big kind of legal bet they made, if you know what I mean? They thought this language would work and they got called on it by the Supreme Court? Well, there was one judge on the uh, on the court, on the high court who dissented, who pointed out that you know there have been past programs that that did use this grant language to get around that cap to try to uh, kind of massage the language of the law to make sure that it wouldn't run into that constitutional spending limit. But in this case, a majority of the justices said, "We just don't think this works the way uh, the drafters, the Invest in Ed movement intended." And this language, this grant specific language is unconstitutional. And as I mentioned, that's probably going to wind up tossing the whole uh, initiative out of the law. So it hasn't been tossed out yet. What's next? Well, a trial court is going to have to take a look at the evidence available. And this was kind of another issue of dissent for one of the justices. Uh, you know, the law has it's in effect, but the tax isn't being collected yet. So the first year that taxes are going to be collected is on your 2021 income, which doesn't get collected until uh, the end of the year into 2022. So we don't know exactly how much money Prop 208 is going to generate. We have projections. We have legislative budget analysts who've said it could be anywhere from the $800 million to $900 million range. But we're we're basically sending this back to the court and the trial court is going to have to decide based on these projections, whether or not they think something is going to happen. Wow. All right. Ben Giles, another fascinating turn in prop 208. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Bram.